Our first guests tonight are the co-authors of the number one New York Times bestseller, The President's Daughter, which is out now. Please welcome to the show, President Bill Clinton and James Patterson. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, James. How are you? Good to see you. Come on up. Welcome, gentlemen. Here we are, big time authors. So cool. I get a whole, I get a couch. Man. You get a I whole like couch. We saw oh, you like it recline. We were gonna have two chairs, but then we heard your rider insisted that you have your own your own couch. <laughs> <Did I lay out? laughs> now uh, I wanna start by clarifying this is about your previous book was about a president going missing. This is about a president's daughter going missing. Different president. Different president. This is and different. out of office. And out of office. So Just there out of office. <laughs> Where do you get your ideas? A president out of office. <laughs> yeah, what a crazy idea. <laughs> well, this actually is a it, I think has a very interesting premise because what you find uh, when you leave the White House, things change. I mean, they don't play a song when you walk in the room anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you lose, you keep your Secret Service protection <clears throat> for yourself and your spouse, but it's less, and your uh, children over 18 don't get it. Oh, I didn't realize they lose it after yeah, 18. And so this is a story about how the things you do when you're president that have consequences other people don't like can follow you out of the office and fall on your children. Um, obviously, in your books, um, these are very, uh, you know, they're thrillers. A lot of extreme things happen, and yet we've seen since your first book in 2018, even more extreme events happen with real uh, presidents. Yeah. Has it been harder? <laughs> to uh, write things that make people say, wow, that's amazing. You know, back amazing. in the 60s, Philip Roth, because we had Nixon in Vietnam, and he said, I, I can't compete. I'll never write fiction again. Yeah. He then eventually did write fiction again. But that, but that is an issue right now. Yeah, but if you look what happened with uh, the latest cybersecurity stuff, our book looks pretty realistic. Yeah. And this is also very important because we, you're living in this world where these you know, people can be omnipresent for all kinds of reasons everywhere. And what you do when you're president follows you afterward. So then you have to figure out, I mean, this is made more interesting by the alienation of the president from his successor and the uncertainty the former president has that his child is going to be a top priority. So you get a lot of interesting cross currents here. I uh, have heard that you, and I think when we picture presidents reading, uh, we picture them reading uh, briefings or maybe reading nonfiction, but you did find time in office to read fiction. Was that something <clears throat> that helped as an escape from the rigors of the job, or did you actually find inspiration in the pages of fiction when you were uh, in office? Oh, both. I started in, in, the, um, in the early 80s. I started reading thrillers, mystery, detective novels. I was always fascinated by them. And I found them, the good ones, really in, you know, great character portraits. Yeah, a, a lot of the presidents I actually read a lot of thrillers. The Bushes both did. President Clinton, I don't know about President Trump, but you know, whatever. He lived a, it was a thrill. <laughs> he lived it was a thrill Trump. ride. But anyway, I, <laughs> I, and I read, on occasion, I would read uh, fiction books because I thought they might be an omen of what to do. And I read The Hot Zone, Richard Preston's The Hot Zone, and it really accelerated my efforts to get the, the White House to set up a special unit on uh, dealing with biological and chemical outbreaks, and, a, uh, and especially in the biological area, both deliberate biological warfare and the possibility of pandemics. And uh, we started working on this in about 1998, and that's, we had a lot of plans out. We did a lot of kind of war gaming, I mean, real efforts with security people all over America. And we set up the first stockpile. So I've, I've been waiting for what happened with COVID. And we were, look, with SARS, with mayors, with all this stuff, we were, we were given plenty of advance warning that something like this could happen. Now, James, as an author who's aware that you have presidents in office who are reading books and oftentimes reading your books, 
Uh, do you have a sense of the power you might have to influence based on what you put in your pages? I have no power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Seth. I'm here with the President Clinton. I'm the third wheel, and that's the way it is in life. You know how it is for writers. You're a writer. Yes, I'm a yeah, writer, and oftentimes... Nobody listens to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... Nobody listens to him. That's how he sold 400 million books. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say they don't read me. They just don't listen to me. Yeah. What, uh, 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 when... Do you guys ever... Uh, have arguments about a, a plot point, and then is that a situation, James, where uh, <laughs> a, a former president maybe pulls rank on even someone who sold 400 million We books? have never, no, we've never had an argument. I mean, we'll talk about the different, you know, one of the things I think that separates us, because a lot of the books, a lot of thriller, we make stuff up. If I'm, if I'm writing with the president, some of the stuff might be a little over the top, although nothing's over the top these days. Uh, but, but the president makes sure that if, if it happens, this is how it would happen. And he's very strict about that. And that's, I think, what separates these books. We, we don't have arguments. What we really have is we have interesting discussions because now that I've done this twice, basically, as a student of a master, what I have learned is we start with an outline. We have a beginning. We think we know what the end is. And we have an outline. But then these people become real as you write about them. Yeah. And the scenes become vivid. And... So the storylines begin to take a little different turn. And so one of the things that we'd have to do, uh, like in this last book we did it, at the end we have to say, hey, we're going to have two loose ends here. Let's figure out how we're going to tie them up. And then, you know. The endings almost always change. And, and when I do, and it's true with the books that we do together, I like to pretend there's one person sitting across from me, and I don't want them to get up till we finish the story. And that's kind of what we try to do with the president's daughter. Um, you, uh, uh, I can only imagine uh, what it's like, uh, the way you write must be so fast, uh, James, based on, on output. Uh, are you someone that responded to uh, the process? I mean, I know it's every two years, but you've certainly written other books. In but it the wasn't years. necessarily every two years. I don't know that we, we, we missed each other. We, that's why we got back together, you know. <laughs> we had a good time. We said, let's the do first another one, one. yeah. You, uh, yeah. Hillary is writing a book as well. We're Absolutely. not going to talk about With that. Luke. Let her no, come see, here heard... and she can sell her own book. Yeah, no, well, I've heard this, James. I've so heard you're very competitive, yeah. Yeah, and he's doing it, she's doing it with Louise Penny, who is a fabulous she's very good. mystery yeah. writer and a good friend of ours. She is. So there's a little bit of uh, gender and, as well as friendship competition here. And I've read the book. It's a really good book. It's going to be Unfortunately. released. <laughs> no, it, it there's is. a lot of room for good. everybody to good. succeed, James. No, there doesn't. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's there's very little room at the number one spot. Rising. There's number one and, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, the important thing is that you get your, uh, uh, your name out there. I think that's a really important <laughs> thing for you. Right.